So there are basically three types of controlled airspace with Class E airspace. Now Class E airspace can be shown as either a dashed magenta line or circle, as you can see in this picture of the sectional chart. And it can also be shown as a faded magenta circle or line. Also faded blue lines as well, but that's mostly in the Western United States. But on the inside of this Class E faded magenta airspace, the airspace begins at 700 feet AGL and extends up until it runs into the next overlying airspace which could be class A airspace all the way up to 18,000 feet. So this class E airspace could start at 700 feet AGL and extend all the way up to 17,999 feet. The outside of this airspace and everything in between begins at 1,200 feet AGL and again would extend up to, but not including 18,000 feet MSL. The FAA wants remote pilots to understand how to interpret and read sectional charts because if you were hired to inspect this group of towers, we'll call them, and again, you can see in the parentheses, the height of the tower is 460 feet AGL. So you could not fly just simply 400 feet above the uppermost part of that tower you would be restricted to 240 feet because it is underneath that class E echo airspace. Now down here to the Southwest, the same thing applies. Although it's close, you could not simply add 400 feet to that 330 feet AGL. You'd be penetrating into the bottom of that class E echo airspace. You would be limited to 370 feet maximum. Now let's get into the class E airspace a little bit more in detail because it is perhaps one of the trickiest airspaces to review. Now part 107, Dot four one states operation in certain airspace. No person may operate a small unmanned aircraft in class B, C, or D airspace or within the lateral boundaries of the surface area of class E airspace designated for an airport unless that person has prior authorization from ATC. And incidentally, whenever the FAA is referring to ATC or air traffic control in some of their publications, it is always going to be now referring to FAA authorization. That is what they really mean. So here we have Class E Echo Airport. We have a airport inside this Class E Echo controlled airspace that runs from the surface all the way up to the next overlying airspace, which is likely Class A airspace. So this Class E airspace runs from the surface up to 17,999 feet. It is nestled inside Class E echo airspace that begins on the inside again at 700 feet AGL and on the outside at 1,200 feet AGL. However, if you were hired to inspect this group of towers, we'll call them, we can see the height of the uppermost part of the tower is 415 feet AGL. You could not just simply fly 400 feet AGL above the uppermost part of that tower because you would be penetrating into the lower shelf of that Class E airspace. Again, that Class E airspace begins at 700 feet AGL, and that Class E airspace is a designated Class E airport. So the maximum you could fly over that tower without obtaining FAA authorization is 285 feet. You could inspect the top of that tower at 415 feet. It's just outside that controlled Class E echo airspace but it's underneath that 700 foot lower shelf of that class E airspace. So you would not need FAA authorization as long as you remained underneath that lower shelf of 700 feet AGL. Now here we have Blue Earth Airport 
And this is actually an airport that's in uncontrolled Class G airspace. So this is a Class G airport. Now, although we see Class E Echo airspace surrounding it, remember Class E Echo airspace is beginning at 700 feet AGL. So everything below it is uncontrolled Class G airspace. So if you were hired to inspect the uppermost top of this group of cell towers, we'll call them, we can see they are 499 feet AGL. So part 107 permits a remote pilot to fly up to 400 feet over the uppermost top of that structure. And that would put a remote pilot up to 899 feet AGL. Now, although that would penetrate into the bottom part of that Class E Echo airspace, that is permissible under Part 107.41.